Good morning and, oh, it's good afternoon now, and welcome. I am Tracy Jane Hughes from businesscheerleadingclub.com and um, we help busy, passionate people to grow their businesses in the right way for them. And today I'm delighted to have Annabelle Kay from coffeeclatch.co.uk with me, who I've met probably 18 months ago and ever since then Annabelle has been my go-to person for so many things. Um, to do with contracts and GDPR and just an all round good person to know in helping you to get your business under control mm -hmm. because often we feel out of control in our business, Annabelle, and this Brexit thing, whatever it is, is making lots of business owners feeling even more out of control. So, Annabelle, how you know, we, we wanted to talk about how to sort of get back a little bit of control for ourselves when stuff over there is happening. So, you know, what's your advice at the moment for us? Well, as far as it's almost impossible, even at this late stage, to tell anybody what's going on. So it was a bit like we first met business-wise in, in the madness of the run up to GDPR, didn't we? Yeah. And before that, we could have met business-wise in the, in the madness of the run up to digital VAT. And there were lots of people I'm going to meet for the first time in the madness of the run up to changes to IR35. So the core message I want to give is that there are always things that radically affect your business that are nothing to do with you, yeah. right? Unless you run the country or even the world, there's always going to be stuff that you've got to handle that you didn't ask for, you you may or may not like, but you're not fully prepared for. That's kind of how it works. And I've learned that lesson because this year is our 39th year of being in business. Wow. Yeah. So gotcha. I've had a lot of inner control, out of control, not sure about the control in that time. And if you're thinking, oh, I don't know what's happening. I don't know what to do about it. That's perfectly normal. We all go yeah. through it when these big convulsions happen. And it, it, the first thing I think to get back in control is to understand that if you're feeling this is all too much and I've no idea what to do next, that means you've got a grip on what's going on. There are a few people I'm coming across who go, there is no doubt in my mind that what's going to happen in two weeks' time is X. And I'm kind of looking at them going, yeah, really. Um, we live in uncertain times. So we have to learn how to plan our business for, you remember that old advertising slogan, a future you don't know. Because we still yes. don't know if we're having a hard Brexit, a soft Brexit on Theresa May still a soft Brexit on some other deal? If so, when? Possibly no Brexit at all, Norway, Canada minus, whatever. This is ridiculous. We've got bills to pay, haven't we? <laughs> we we have. And, you know, and, and so some of those, you know, there'll be some people in business now that weren't in business in the, the last recession. And the last recession happened just like that. It started. And nobody expected it. You know, the economic forecasters hadn't predicted it. OK, Annabelle, you did. I didn't know you then. Um, but, you know, that there were lots of people that were in businesses that were ready and able to cope with that recession. And there were lots of others that weren't. And even though, you know, I'm talking to lots of business owners at the moment that are saying they're already seeing, you know, downturn in their sales. People aren't booking, you know, booking them. They're not buying from them. And it's not just luxury items. You know, this is some everyday stuff that people are just saying, well, actually, I'm just going to wait and see what happens. And if if yeah. the customers are waiting to see what happens, well, if businesses wait to see what happens, that might not be a great thing for them. But this is this is reality. This is what's happening at the moment. Yeah. So from your, yeah. you know, long experience, how can people help themselves at the moment i think of it as a triage process you know it's like when you when you go to hospital and there's a major disaster and i'm not trying to suggest we're in a major disaster i actually don't know what we're in you know yeah but they look at people and they go you've got a minor injury you can wait 
you've got yes. an injury that will kill you. You can wait because you're going to yeah. die anyway. I don't want to depress anyone. Um, but you, we can help. But if we don't help you now, nobody can. So this is called triage. And I think in business, when you're in uncertain times, and it's no bad thing anyway, you need to look at the state of your business and timelines, because that's what triage is yeah. about. Right. So if your business has to make decisions a year ahead, and you've seen this with some of the big businesses, they've had to call it that a hard Brexit is happening and make their decisions accordingly. Right. I don't think government totally gets it that even the tiny of us would quite like to know now what's happening in April. <laughs> it might not be unreasonable. But the big businesses, they have long timelines. So if your timeline is I have to decide to invest in this or I have to uh, raise this money or do this thing, you need to be very clear about it. Because a lot of the entrepreneurs I'm talking to have really got to know what they're doing in April, May, June. Other entrepreneurs need to know what they're doing this time next year, but they've already called it because they're not they're not leaving it this late. So the first thing we need to look, anybody to look at is timelines. What do you need to know for sure? And what difference does it make? And they've with, already called it. With all these three um, possibilities, really, because the three main possibilities a deal, no deal, no Brexit. Everything else is a sub variation of that. And I, I'm not suggesting which is the most likely. I'm just doing it as the logic tree. So yeah. what could you be doing between April and June that would be affected by one more than the other? And what could you do about it? Well, the, the first thing is if you travel for business or you're in the travel business, there's a lot of stuff. I think I did a, a video about it on our Coffee Clutch Facebook page about travel. It seems that aeroplanes will not be falling out of the sky, come what may. It yeah. seems that we will be able to go to Europe, but maybe not for that long, but for, for tourism in 80 businesses, that's OK. It seems that you probably will need an international driving permit, but you can get one at a post office relatively near you. If yeah. like me, you are smart enough to work out the old fashioned photo booths, because I'm a digital girl and I couldn't believe it, that I had to go and physically find a photograph and physically stand in a queue and go and get it. I was thinking online, but no, you know, this is a real retro thing about driving licenses. So if you need to move from A to B, make sure your passport's got at least six months on it, because if it isn't yeah. and you need to be in the EU area, you, you need to renew it now. Now, you might waste your time because you might find out that next week you never needed to. So you have to call it cost of new passport, what, about 100 quid? Cost of not being able to go anywhere if it turns out my passport's out of date. Now, for most of us, we pay a lot more than 100 quid on going on holiday or going away on business. It's a no-brainer. Spend the 100 quid. Yeah. If you're in that zone. Similarly, with an international driving license, you might be wasting your time. They're about eight fifty for one zone, twelve fifty for another. If you are about to hire a car aboard or take your car aboard, it's a no-brainer. Get it done because <laughs> it reduces uncertainty. If you need to take your own car aboard, the insurance companies are already ready to issue what used to be known as green card. Yeah. What is not clear, by the way, in an electronic age is, are they going to post you something? Yeah. Are they going to email you something? And are you going to need to print it? Because if you're going to be stopped by a policeman, the far side of Andorra, maybe saying, can I log on all my insurances online is not the way to go. So I would print stuff that normally I wouldn't print because yeah. I wouldn't be clear about how viable it is. So yeah, I sorts of things a, a, a lot of people well we we've had um information from our insurance company so again i imagine a lot of insurance companies have been sending advice to people so it is really worth reading every single company that you are involved with their advice and how they are wanting you to deal with you know the, the current situation my insurance company for my car has said you know print it off you know, we will send you um, this and you will need to print it off and have it with you. Um, so, but every, I imagine every company is, yeah. is dealing yeah. with this in a different way. I would print it, which is in an uptick in business somewhere because I'm not a very 
print it paperwork kind of girl and i yeah. discovered when i went to print it because it's six months since the last time i printed anything that my printer didn't work so somewhere in the printer industry got an uptick due to brexit because i had to buy another one because i said okay. so i should be printing a lot more stuff than i normally did and it was yeah. worth the 80 quid for another inkjet so these are the sorts of decisions you have to make yes and obviously i am going somewhere by the way on the 23rd of april so i i kind of really did think yeah. to print stuff if I'd be going in September, I'd probably be going, hang on a minute, I'll pick this up in June and see yeah. what's happening then. So time is a really big element in your decision making. Yes. The same, I think, is true of if you are selling things that rely on goods that come in from Europe. So you might be importing or you might be making stuff from things that are imported. Now, you know the timelines of your own supplier but if you're going to the local cash and carry or the local wholesaler have a word with them because not only uh, could there be some delays and lots of people have stopped up to keep it smooth yeah. but there is the little detail of tariffs now obviously we don't brexit or we brexit on a deal there won't be any tariffs in april i'm not saying there'll never be any tariffs but we're talking the next 90 days what the government have said, which is a bit weird, is that there is a whole range of tariffs from the World Trade Organization that will apply at that moment, but they're not going to apply all of them. But the ones that they're mostly looking at not applying are food related and essential service related. So if you're a jeweler or you're selling heating parts or whatever, you may find that whether you're directly importing or whether your wholesaler is, that there will be tariffs. And when someone pays the tariff, and that will be the person that imports, that will generate a price rise. Yeah. Now you have two choices when it comes to price rise, and it's difficult. One is to absorb it and reduce the profitability of your business, and the other is to pass it on. Now, if you're putting your prices up, you have to judge whether the risk of putting your prices up but keeping your profit margins where they are is better than leaving your prices as they are and reducing your profits. Now, I guess it slightly depends how much people want what you do anyway. Yes. What your competitors do. So, for example, if I was in the jewellery business, and I don't want to disappoint you, but nobody needs jewellery. Yeah. <laughs> right? The first thing you're going to do is, I'm not buying that ring, I'm not buying that necklace. I'm, and I, I think that's, if you like, discretionary spend. You need to look at the effect that's going to have on your business. Because if you sell a lot of stuff at a loss, it will finish your business. If you, you might be better off going, what would happen if my business volume reduced by half, for argument's sake? And I'm, I'm not suggesting you're about to lose half your business. I'm just doing it for the mass. But the half I did was profitable in terms of wholesale to retail. What would my overhead need to look like over the next 90 days? to make sure that's right. So you might, you really do need to model your business. Now, a lot of micropreneurs, you don't model your business. Yeah. Right? You charge what everyone else charges and you kind of look at what the traffic will bear. But if other people are desperately slashing prices and making a loss. Now we did this in the recession before last, or it might've been the one before that. We had a training business. We still do a certain amount of training, but we don't market it that much because the rates have fallen flat. Yeah. And at that time, we were charging £2,000 a day. Still do, by the way, but we only really do 10 days a year. Didn't yeah. want to do any days at all at £500 a day. Drew the math. So we sat down and we went, we're doing X amount of days in the year at two grand. If we drop our prices to 1000 or £500, we will get all these extra days. But it added up to the same annual turnover. So we took the decision to leave our prices where they were, go right for the top end of what we were doing and pull yeah. out the lower end business. Lots of training consultancies went bankrupt in that recession because they were trying to out discount each other and they all went down. I think now the average training day rate is 500 quid. Some people at yeah. associate rate are doing 250. Right? Yeah. I, I don't mean no insult when I, and I know it sounds arrogant, but no, I don't do that. Happy to stay in bed. No offence, men. <laughs> I can't make my business work on that sort of pricing. You need to know that about your business. Yeah. 
because sometimes you're better off in uncertain times selling less that you definitely get paid for and you definitely get a lot more money for and using the rest of the time to do something else. A yeah. really hard decision to call in your own business. At that time, we had a, a global training business. And to pull back from that and go, if we can't sell at that level, we don't want to know, was massively disruptive. So we, we went from basically five-day-a-week training business to two-day-a-week, but we made the same day rate. So we used the other three days to build other businesses. That's an entrepreneur for you, isn't it? But you've got to be clear. Yes. So is that helpful? And I know lots of people don't have businesses. And by the way, I don't get many bookings at two grand a day, but I'm grateful for all of them. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and I think that's absolutely right, Annabelle. It's about what what is your business? What, what are you wanting to achieve? And it's mm. not just about paying your household bills. It's obviously, you know, running your business and paying your business costs. And if you've got staff, you, you need to pay for them. You know, if you've got premises, even if you're, um, you know, renting a chair, for example, you know, in, in a hairdresser's, um, you know, or, or a beauty, beauty parlour, you know, you've still got those costs. But if people are, are, are coming less to the beauty parlour, you know, what is it you want to do? Is it, you know, what what are you doing your business for? Um, and and a lot of... Sorry to interrupt, you got really with what you were saying about beauty parlours and things. So, But there were great things that improve from some people's point of view when times get tough. Let me give you yeah. an example. I'm a West End bunny when it comes to getting my hair done. I don't have many extravagances in life, but I have a hairdresser I adore and it costs a fortune. And I was sitting there because he was thinking he wasn't going to get a visa and he's Italian and I thought this will come to an end. Maybe as an economy drive, I should get my hair done locally. So for everybody not getting their hair done at all because they've gone broke, there's another person going, well, I used to like Mayfair, but I'm going to go to local. Right? Yeah. So if you're, if you're a local hairdresser or a local beautician or a local whatever, you need to target people whose idea of economising. It's not stopping doing it at all. Yes. But stopping doing it much more expensively because you are usually cheaper because you've got cheaper overhead. So yeah. for everybody who suffers in a recession, there's someone else who gains. So if you're a, a relatively cheap jeweler, and obviously you've got junk jewelry that's made in China, and you know I'm talking about craft jewelry, a lot of your current customers may go, I'm not going to buy. But what about the person who normally spends five times as much? If you can find a route to that market, you're the bargain basement. You are the economy drive for them. Weirdly enough. Yeah, and, and, and again, I think it, it comes down to that, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities at the moment. And I think a lot of people are feeling um, a bit unhinged about not knowing what's happening with Brexit. You know, it will affect all of us personally, not just business owners. You know, it will affect us all, um, you know, whatever happens. And it is currently affecting us all. And there's lots of people that... Um, are very concerned about it. You know, my my fifteen year old, you know, he's, <laughs> he gets quite vocal about it. Um, but if you know your business, you can use this opportunity to reframe it, like you did in one of the previous recessions, and go. Actually, I love this part of my business, and I'm going to focus on that. But actually, this bit, it's no longer viable, or I no longer love it, or it's no longer necessary in the market because this that and the other has happened um so you know you 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 can it, this is just like any other opportunity or just a change in the environment that will knock any business owner at any time so what you're saying annabelle is just it's just being a business owner it's just doing what you need to do as a business owner isn't it it's irritating it's that you spend a lot of time and effort finding a business model that works for you, works for your yeah. lifestyle, works for your budget, works for the time it can work. And when something like this sideswipes it, you think, oh, do I have to? You know, I was happy with the way things were. 
But yeah. nothing stays the way it was. Brexit is the is the most recent in a long line of things that change stuff. And ahead of it, we've got changes to tax law, we've got artificial intelligence, we've got, I don't know, the heat death of the sun. There's always something, isn't there? Global warming, yeah. whatever. You really have to look at what allows you to survive when times get tough. Now, one of the triages I always do is how much of my business is done on credit. Right, because what tends to happen, particularly in B2B, is credit slows down. Right, the people yeah. who've suddenly got to pay imports on tariffs will pay you a month or two months later because they've got to pay that to get the stuff out the docks in order to yeah. sell it to make the money to pay you. Right, yeah. so credit slows up. So one of the things I did in my own business in all the recessions, and I did it with post-it notes, you know, I'm talking about financial complicated modeling here was what do i do that gets paid cash up front or or plastic up yep. front as it is these days what do i do that has a long line of credit how vulnerable am i what percentage of my business is actually on people promising to pay me at some point also i looked at how vulnerable is my business to one or two big clients either pay me really solely or we're still going bust yeah because as micropreneurs, we often have one, one big client that's 80% of our business. And actually, yeah. if they don't pay us, we're dead in the water. We don't like to face that down, recession or not, by the way, but that's yes. true. So one of the things I like to do in times of hardness is to diversify the way people pay me. Yeah. To see what, what can I know? What we did in, in our my big brand with coffee clutch is, is like my granddaughter my daughter is Irenicon, which is the one that is almost 40 i can't believe this right so and when i looked at Irenicon, i realized that the majority of our business was only made that was paid but we did the work and then eventually people paid us so we were extremely vulnerable in the last two recessions to doing all that work and nobody paying us because yeah. we couldn't get the work back, could we? We couldn't go, well, I'll have my week back and I'll send it to someone yes. else. We would just exhaust ourselves going, but so we actually created a system for us where we had a prepayment rate and we had a credit rate, and there was a massive difference between the two. We made sure the prepayment rate was profitable, by the way. We weren't trading at a loss on prepay. That's the yeah. system we run to this day. So what we do is we only let people go so far on credit, even if we love them to pieces. And then we go, hang on a minute, once you owe us this amount, there's no more work unless you clear the account. We can afford to do that because you've got micro clients paying us tiny amounts cash up front. We've balanced the business. It forced us to. Yeah. And again, that's how that's that's the, the business model, but that's come from looking at every single part of your business and looking at, at the clients so you've got some big clients you've got some smaller clients um and you've got some people that, that pay you for support on a regular basis um and and you do one-off things and you've got your training days but that's that's your business model and you've you recognized that you had to change things because you you know your business was vulnerable and i think this is this you know brexit at the moment is an opportunity for people to look at their business yes, and, yes. And, and and just just look at every single part of it just as you described and i think that's a really really valuable tip um annabelle to to look at that that credit you know how many people are paying you and like you say just doing our post-it notes you know what percentage of your business is is being paid after you've done the work or after you've supplied and how how long do you give them so what are your terms and that's one of the things that you know you're you're very very good at um you know with helping businesses with is their contract um, and managing the expectations of the people that you work with so you know it's it might be hard you know it, it's we're not saying any of this is easy reviewing your business that you love and that you've grown you know it, it's it's a hard thing to do because you you're trying to look at it with clear eyes and not the rose tinted eyes that you when you first set up your business that, that you had yeah. so, yeah. yes 
Right, just can you just say that again because it just it just got no, out a little to bit. You have to review the business you've got, not yeah. the one you hope for. Right, it's great to have hopes and plans, but the one that's paying the rent is the one you've actually got, and that's yeah. the one you've got to review to go will it or can it. It's a bit like having a child that you encourage to be a great swimmer and you thought they'd be an Olympic athlete, but actually the thing they're really great at is football. Right, it, you can't yeah. go, but it's all about swimming because that's not what's happening. Although business yeah. planning is really important, I discover when I go through this process, and I do every five years, by the way, recession or not, weird legal changes or not, that quite often I've got bits in my business that grew there, that some of which are really healthy and some of which are really like diseases that I've got to get rid of for some reason. I started doing that thing and it sucks time and it sucks money and there's no point. And yeah. that's often people pleasing, which I think is really important in, in difficult times. I've got customers already, a few, because obviously we have different people ahead of the curve going, yeah. I, I support X with services and they're not paying me. And they're, 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 they're phoning me up demanding stuff and I keep giving it to them because I don't want to upset them. And I'm like, hang on a minute, you're working for free. So it's not to upset someone. How is that going? And it's incredibly difficult if you've got a good relationship with a customer and we all want to be human and we all want to be generous, but you have to pay your rent. So yeah. you have to have a strategy right now and you've got to formulate it, you know, with Tracy or anyone else to go, what happens if the people that I really like to be in business with start paying me really slowly? Am I going to carry on servicing them the way I always do? And if so, how am I going to pay my rent, my mortgage? Because for a lot of businesses, the answer is not cut them off at the knees and do nothing. I do. With my clients, I'll say, look, you owe me 300 quid. I've sold that time. I can't get it back. right. But I'm not going to do another 300 quid worth of time and another 300 quid and another 300 quid. How, how am I going to pay my team? right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do another 30 quid worth of time. So now you're going to owe me 330. And when you pay me 100 quid, so you've reduced the debt, I'll do a bit more. So I actually have a plan and a dialogue with them about what's going to happen. Well, you'll yeah. find if things get tough, people don't want to talk about it. They want to act as if they're not in trouble. And they want you to carry on servicing them as if they were paying you. Yes. This yes, is very it's very true. Enormous trouble. Very true. Um, Annabelle, we've come to the end of our time, which is always a pity because I could talk to you all day and I always learn so much from you. Um, so Annabelle is from coffeeclatch.co.uk um, and helps you get all your ducks in a row. Um, whatever whatever stage of business you are at. Um, and I'm Tracy Jane Hughes from businesscheerleadingclub.com. And I help busy, passionate people to grow their business in the right way for them. So until next time, thank you so much, Annabelle, for your time and your tips. Um, I'll see you soon. Thank you for inviting me, Tracy. See you soon. Bye.